Hello everybody, Marcus with MLC CAD Systems, and today I've got a fun tech tip for you. I want to create something twisting, like a helix. Now if you want to create a helix in SolidWorks, it's pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and grab a sketch, 2D sketch, draw a circle, set your diameter of the outside of the helix that you want, and then it's simply a helix feature. Select the circle, set the pitch, set the height or the number of revolutions, and it creates that helical curve for you quick and easy. Great for things like springs, cutting threads, you name it. But what if you need something more complicated? Let's say that I want this thing to go along a non-straight path. Well, you can't do that in the helix. You can do tapered and things like that, but it's got to go in a straight line. So let's back it up and let's talk about doing this. Maybe we're wrapping a heating wire around a pipe. And so that pipe goes in a straight section and then it has maybe a curve or something like that. So it's going to end up looking a little bit like a candy cane. So we'll draw out this just example section of pipe that we want to use to build uh, this wrapped wire. So the helix effectively just simply needs to turn a corner. We'll get this thing fully defined because we need to make sure we're fully defined and Keep an eye on the dimensions. This is something where it's really easy to sort of overlap yourself. So at this point, I've got the path that I want to take. And now what I'm going to do is draw sort of the cross section of that wire that we're going to wrap around. And it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to do a swept boss. Uh, you can do a, a sweep of whatever shape you need, but you can do the path and the profile. I guess that's the profile and the path. And then there are options. There's an option to set twist, and you can tell it you want to twist at a certain number of revolutions. So let's just say five revolutions, and we get that wire twisting around the length of that pipe. But let's take a look at it. It is a circular cross section, but because it's twisting and it's not rotating that profile normal to the curve, we get sort of like a deck of cards that's been squished and flattened out. It doesn't have the right cross section looking through it you know, along the path. So let's back up, let's do a different approach. Now this approach, what we're gonna do is create the curve first and then create the geometry. So we're gonna get rid of that circle because that is the cross section we want, but right now we're just interested in where it crosses the outside of the pipe. So we're gonna draw a straight line and this is where we're gonna start using surfacing. So in surfacing, we can say, hey, let me grab this path, or uh, this uh, profile, sweep it along this path and we'll do the rotation along the path just like it did with the solid but because this is a surface right the cross-sectional shape does not matter we're just looking for sort of a location where it's going to hit uh, the outside of that pipe now we need one more sweep because we're going to create the intersection of where the pipe and this helical path meet and to create the curve where those two overlap each other, we're going to create a 3D sketch and we're going to use the intersection curve. So if you've ever used convert entities, you know intersection curve is basically that, but in 3D, it requires that they actually touch in three-dimensional space. So I'll exit that sketch and I now have a path that's perfect for what I need. It's going to be a wire, so we'll just use a regular circular cross section select the path of the 3D sketch, and boom, hit the tab key to hide those surface bodies, and you see we have a nice wire, perfect cross-section of a wire all the way through, circular, um, being wrapped around this pipe five times. Now this is great, right? Fun, we're doing really good, but what if, and just bear with me for a second, what if this wire was a twisted pair of wires that needed to go along this path. So I'm gonna delete the solid, and we're gonna repeat the process. And you can repeat this as many times as you need. Basically, click the end point and the end curve and create a sketch. And by the way, that's a quick shortcut for uh, creating a sketch at the end of a curve. Just grab the curve and the end point. Creates a plane for you automatically. So we're gonna draw the line where we want it to intersect and the sort of the circular diameter of the twist in the wire. And with those two together, we will then twist or sweep those along the macro twist, the big twist, and we're gonna create the smaller twist. So there's our first piece 
no problem, right? Got a nice tube that goes around. Uh, we could have also left that solid body and just turned it into a surface body by deleting the ends on it, but this will work out pretty well. Now I'm going to twist this along the path, but if you notice, it's not, it didn't pick it automatically. And when I come in here and I tell it that I want to twist, I'm going to get a message that tells me that this is not continuous or not curvature continuous. Now this can happen, especially if you're using analytical geometry where you've got just tangency controls, but then you use that to, you know, convert a complex curve uh, intersection off of that. So I'm going to back this up. Uh, I'm delete that original tube that I created, and I'm just going to make one quick change, which is to select the entire intersection curve, and we'll do a fit spline. So I hit the S key, typed in fit to find the fit spline command, and it just best fits a single continuous curve around what was previously not quite continuous, simply because of how the curvature kind of hit each other around that tangent point. Uh, if I'd been using, uh, you know, splines all the way along, it shouldn't have been an issue. So now I've got this, I can create my twisting profile, and it gives me a limit of 100, so I'd have to maybe do this in sections if I needed it to be more twisted than that. But now I have a twist around the twist around the path. I'll re-grab re that profile sketch, or that path sketch and the circular profile, and go ahead and do kind of the tube that represents the um, space that the that the the small spiral is going to take up. And the last step is to create my 3D sketch. Again, we're just kind of following that that process of grabbing the bodies, creating the intersection curve, and that builds that that shape. As we're going, we're getting more and more complexity, so it's starting to take a little bit longer to build each time. But now, if I'm ready to build that wire, what I can do is hide those bodies, grab that intersection curve, and create a solid sweep. Now, if you need to create multiple entities in that bundle, where I drew the line to create the spiral, I could have created multiple lines, or I could repeat that and kind of clock that line around the circle to create multiple independent paths. You can't use any patterns because each one of these wires twists in a totally different way, but with this proof of concept, you can now, using that path, build your wire and build that twisting twist on a twist. Uh, think of cables, really large cable bundles where you have a twisted pair that gets twisted with another twisted pair, and then that pair gets twisted into another one. Uh, you can do this basically ad infinitum and create twisting twists on twisted paths with twists. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, like it, let us know in the comments what else you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.